What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Stephen Alexander. Today, I have a very special guest with me today, Miss Treva Gordon. She is a businesswoman, a spokeswoman. I mean, just everything, entrepreneur, every, every title, this woman wears it. And I am so glad that she is here with me today just to discuss some things and discuss her loss events that she's doing around the Clarksville, Montgomery area, and just so much more. You guys stay tuned while you're watching IST. There's a Steven Show, the Steven Show, the Steven Show, yeah. Well, hello, Treva. How you doing? How's things? Hi. Oh, man, I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm so happy to be here, Stephen. You're looking great. Thank you. You too. You too. It's been, like we talked about earlier, it's been a long time since we've just communicated, we've talked, and, you know, nothing personal. It's just been a long time, and I know you've been going through things. I've been going through things, but it's so good to see you and see that you're doing good and looking beautiful as ever. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. It's so great to be seen and so great to see that you are continuing in the work and, you know, bringing some wonderful people on television, and I'm grateful for this opportunity. Yes, yes. I want to ask you, so many people know you from just the the Clarksville area, the Montgomery County area, and just not just that, but just uh, Robertson County, Davidson County, you're just a person that's out there. You've always been a person big on networking and, you know, getting people connected with other people. I want to ask you, what was your childhood like and why, how did, how did you navigate through that being a child? Did you always have that personality just to connect with people? Well, thank you for asking. I believe I always had it. I was always trying to bring people together. I could be on the playground, and if you needed one person to play kickball tag, I said, let me go find so-and-so. And so I was always that person, like, in my life. I was a creative child, and I don't think my parents really knew what to do with me. They said, what do we do with all that creativity? I would go out, knock on doors, and do a singing telegram to make money or earn extra dollars or what have you, or just always trying to help elderly people and I served in the church so one of the greatest things that I am very proud of is just my service not only to community but serving in my church from uh, being on the choir to ushering you know all of those things so I really believe it helped just anchor me and prepare me for a life of, of servitude yeah yeah um so how do you think that affects your adult life from being a child being involved with so many things and then now as an adult how did you navigate through that? I would have to say my faith. I would have, and it's just not a cliche or anything, but it truly is my faith. It was times that, you know, as a child and growing up, you experience a lot of things, even in your family and dealing with life itself. So I would have to say it was my strong background, uh, my mother taking me to church all the time and praying, giving me that prayer life that I needed as a young woman because I didn't know that I would only have her for 22 years in my life. So I would have to say my mother, one of the strongest women ever in my life, my two grandmothers, and I believe they gave me the tools necessary to do what I'm doing today. It takes strong women to encourage women and they were the pillars in my life. So I have to give shout out to God, but also my mother, my mother helped me. Yeah. 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 So at age 22, you mentioned you lost your mother. How did that yeah. make you? during that time growing up. Oh man, it, it devastated me. It was like, how do you lose your best friend? At that time, I was engaged to my husband and we had just, we recently uh, were married, got married. And then my mother would head into this battle. She was dealing with cancer and she passed away from it. And it just left me devastated. I have two younger sisters. And so they were teenagers at the time. And so it was difficult for the entire family. It's like, what do you do when that strong rock? What do you do? Like, I remember we went to church the following Sunday and my dad was there and my siblings. And it was just like, what do you do? Because the woman who did everything. And you never know how much you depend upon, you depend on someone until they're gone. 
So it's like, what do we do now? And so I would have to say again, that faith kicked in, that prayer life kicked in. I had to pray. I had to, you know, find my faith. And um, I'm just grateful. My husband was there. You know, God places great friends in your life. My church was there. And so a great support team is what helps you to get through the tough times, having a great support system. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's um, interesting that you mentioned your husband because your husband just passed recently as well. Oh, yes. I just want to talk about that now. How did you deal with that? Because I know your husband was a pastor and um, you guys were so close. I just tell, you know, you guys had a great, you know, you guys seem to have a great relationship on the outside and you guys seem to be working together and trying to just create a space for people to love God and love each other. So now not having him by your side, how are you dealing with that? I'm still dealing with it. It's tough, Stephen. It's very hard. It's emotional. It's, it's an emotional roller coaster. And I, what I say to people, uh, a young lady had shared this with me, and she also is a widow. She said, widowhood is like, you know, someone takes, cuts your right arm off, and with your left arm or your left hand, they say, now tie your shoes. Go ahead. So you need people. You have to rely upon people because it's like you're just not the same anymore and so it's been very different the journey it is a journey it's not been an easy journey but again support and prayers and just finding it's just like I, I felt like I had lost who I was going through that because when you're married for someone that long for 26 years you know you are Mrs. Treva Gordon that's what I know that's who I am and then when that is now removed it's like who am I and so the Lord blessed me to start an organization, Lending Our Shared Stories, which is lost. And because I was devastated, I began to find comfort in strangers who would say, as I would share with them, you know, I lost my husband, passed away. The strangers were so loving and so compassionate. They would say, I'm so sorry for your loss. And it was genuine. They didn't judge me in my truth. They just, they were strangers and they received me. And I took away that, you know, that's how God is. He doesn't, you know, he loves us unconditionally. And, um, you know, if people are hurting, I know God cares and he has people around us who are also caring. And so the strangers, they help just by being there, expressing empathy and compassion. And that's what we need. And so I would say I'm better. Um, I'm moving forward. But, you know, it hurts. Every day I'm reminded that he's not here. But I pray that even someone watching today who's going through a loss, you know, that you can move forward. You can move. You don't have to. You won't forget about your loved one because I'll never forget about my husband. But I know that I can move forward. And so that's where what I want people to know is that even when devastation hits, you can still move forward. So what do you say to people who do not know how to move? forward because some people find it very hard some people put a lot of their identity in things and when it's not there anymore and it's not the same anymore they just don't know what to do how do they move how do they navigate through differences and change mm -hmm. Yes, there's a question that I ask uh, to our agents of change. And the one question is what God asked me because I was determined I was four months into this thing and I literally felt like I died on the inside. I was done. I wanted to move away. And it's like the Lord asked me one question and the question was, what is your truth? What is your truth? And so I would encourage everyone who's watching today, ask yourself that one question, what is my truth? And I said, God, I'm devastated because you have to know where you are to know where you're going. I'm devastated, I'm heartbroken, I'm, I'm, I'm angry, and that's my truth. And when I gave that to God and I released it, I felt like he, he took that and I'm grateful. And then I heard him say, now share that, tell your story. Because there are people who feel just like the way that you do, they're also devastated. It could be a pet loss and they're devastated. So we don't compare losses to losses pain is pain. And so I pray that they can find comfort because every time I share my story, I feel strength. And you have to tell it. Sometimes we have things that we never want to share, but sometimes you have to just come out and say it because it's healing for your soul. Because some people will take it to their grave and be 99 years old. They'll take it, but you can be free 
because I found myself just in a prison. And the only person that can take you out of that prison is you. And you have to, what is your truth? What is your truth? So what if they don't like you? So what if people don't accept you for you? What is my truth? I'm afraid. That is my truth. That's what God wanted to hear. He was just asking me one question because I was traveling. The traveling was because the grief was running me. I went to like 11 states and two countries. I was traveling and people don't tell you to slow down. They just kind of, oh, look at you, but I was hurting. And then God said, but what is your truth? And when I said that, it just really, it set me free. It really did because, and he, and if it's okay, and if you're hurting, Stephen, it's okay that you're hurting. Like, just, just feel that because we make people, hey, put another mask on. We're walking around with 100 masks. We're wearing them every day because we're hiding. You know, this is me. This is the real person who I am. And if you're not comfortable with my story, hey, it's not your story. It's my story. And, and it's not, your truth is not to make me feel comfortable. My truth is to not make you feel comfortable. I might say, I'm having a bad day. I didn't ask you to fix it. I'm just having a bad day. And we call it support. Just learn to be there for your friends. Let them know that you care. And that's why he had me to go. And the strangers, they were just so, so supportive, sometimes more supportive than family can be. Because family want to know, well, what happened? When did this? I, they didn't ask me that. They just said, I am so sorry for your loss. Yeah. Well, we're, we're going to talk about loss here soon. I want to ask you now, um, because you turned a big number this year. Yeah. And I want to let people know this too. Treva is the publicist of my cousin, Marla McCants, who was on My 600 Pound Life. And you have to follow her story. My cousin is a warrior. Um, she has been through a lot. But just to see that beautiful big smile on her face now, um, it just makes me happy. <laughs> because she, that's who she is. And I met Treva through my cousin. And I just want to ask you now, because so much of the insight that you just gave, you discussed pertaining to having faith. And it was a lot of having God in your corner. Yeah. Being the age that you are now. 50. 50. What advice could you give to people who are my age or people who are turning 50? pertaining to life and how to deal with the hardships and the glorious times of life. Because you don't get to 50 not experiencing different things in your life. But the way you carry it, you carry it with such grace and gratitude and, and such and just such, such poise. How can people carry it the same way as you do? Just what I heard you, um, you said the word gratitude. Gratitude, grace, some of the words that you poise. That's how you get there. Gratitude. Every day you wake up, gratitude. It's easy to, you know, complain about what we don't have. But what about the things that you do have? I'm grateful to see another day. I'm, I'm excited. And when we have the opportunity, because someone didn't who was here yesterday, they're not here today. And so while I have one more time, if today is my last day, make the most of it. And like you said, gratitude, you spoke it so eloquently, gratitude, poise, all of that. I think those are the things that you have to have. And another thing, we have five pillars that we talk about at loss, and it's love, empathy, compassion, kindness, and respect. And if you can walk in those things daily, you will live a blessed and fulfilled life. I received that. I received that. Yes. Yes. Talk about loss because you have mentioned loss and loss. We're going to talk about it. So let, can you let our viewers know what exactly is loss? Um, what does it stand for and what is the benefit of loss? Okay. So loss stands for lending our shared stories. And that's how I was able to rise from, it's rising from devastation to elevation. And whatever the loss that you've had, loss of a pet, a child, perhaps your boyfriend broke up with you, your girlfriend broke up with you. Those are, that's a loss. You got fired from your job. That's a loss. So we talk about it. And I like to sit and share pain is pain. So don't compare your loss with mine. Well, I had it worse than you. You don't, you are not in that person's shoes. You don't know what that person, what it took for that person to be able to go through that situation. And so we just 
we teach our agents, our agents of change, our first responders, a first responder is a person who just, you, you're a supporter. You don't have to give me advice. I'm not asking for advice. Sometimes we need people just to stand with us. Listen, listen. One talk, the other listen. When we need more of that. I'm sure you've seen it all over the, in the debates and things. It's like, we have to get back to listening. So we teach our agents to listen because your heart could be broken, Stephen. You, can be, you could be going through tragedy. And so you don't need me giving you a lecture. You just need me to be there, however the best way that I can. And that's what we're doing because the strangers, they were my teachers. They didn't say, okay, let me give you some advice. Uh, what church you go to. They didn't even ask me what church. I said, y'all don't want to know what church I go to or nothing. They said, no, we're just sorry for your loss. So empathy, kindness, respect, compassion, love, you got to have it. So loss is lending our shared stories. And we're teaching people also, human being university, what to say and what not to say. When a person passes away, I've often heard, be strong. Well, that's not, that's not really good. So we're teaching, we're teaching people how, you know, what to say and what not to say, because I can remember, I said, they meant well, but they just didn't get that part right. They meant well, but sometimes, you know, like one person said, I'm glad I'm not you, and how are the kids? How is that consoling? So we're teaching it because what I went through and experienced, I would never, I just don't want people to go through that kind of pain because you said what you said, like someone said, my husband passed from lung cancer and someone said, well, how long did he smoke? Well, first of all, who said that the person's spouse smoked? You get it? Yeah. So you obviously, you're a mom of two. Three. Three. Oh, that's yes. right. Three. I forgot. Three. Two adult children, two adult children and one teenager. Robin is my, uh, she's the last one. She's 16. Yeah. So I want to ask you, how are you, being strong for your kids. How are you being the mother that you need to be for your children during this time? I think they're being strong for me. I think it's opposite. Yeah, they, I, you know what? Whatever we have instilled in those children, they got it. Like, they helped me out so much. They said, Robin said, Mom, I just think of the memories, the good memories. She said, whenever I feel sad, I think of good memories of dad. You know, and, and then when I began to think about the good memories, then it, the tears began to dry up, you know, and just have a joyful day. And then I recall one time we, we were out, we were on a cruise, actually. And so I felt like I had to make the children remember as if they were going to forget their father. So the whole entire time, Stephen, I'm like, dad would like this and dad would like that and dad would like this and dad, 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 dad. Oh my, they could not eat a sandwich without me saying dad because I was feeling guilty. Like I'm feeling guilty that we're on this cruise and dad. So my son was like, will you be quiet? It's driving us crazy. Mom, we miss dad. But you know, he's not coming back with just, you know, and that's our family. It may sound mean to someone's listening, but it's like he spoke to my heart where he knows that we all miss dad or my husband, but my husband would want us to go on and have a great time. He would want us to continue to live. And that's what I want to say to a person, to anyone who's watching, your loved one would want for you to move forward and to live, not live in the past but move forward and create new memories and celebrate past memories. Yeah. You know, when I look at loss, when I follow the page on Facebook and I see the different things that you're doing, one of the coolest things that I notice is there's men, there's women, but not just men and women, but you have people of all races and nationalities coming together, sharing their stories. And the common connection that we as people have is our stories. Sometimes we get caught up in our race. We get caught up in our ethnicity and our culture and, yes. our and all these different things that we forget the importance of our story. How are you setting an example for those people and other people to realize that we are all more alike than different during this time of racial injustice and social, mm. so much going on. What are you doing to stand out, take action, and to show people that we need to come together during this time? 
I love that question. Well, the one thing that the whole entire world, we've got something that the entire world can relate, and it's L-O-S-S, -S, loss. Where do you hurt? Who hurt you? What did you experience? I didn't ask about your nationality. I didn't ask about your background. I didn't care about how much money. I didn't want to hear it. When my husband passed away, I didn't care if you worked at the bank down there. I didn't care. I didn't care if you were a Republican or Democrat. I didn't care. I was hurting. And when you're hurting, that you, 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 you don't even see, you can't even see beyond the hurt. So the one thing that connects us when you look, and I'm glad you were able to see, how do you have, we have a Buddhist, that's a part of laws. We have Christians that are part, we have people that don't go to church and worship. Hey, the one thing that we have in common, it's, it's our stories and we all have suffered loss. And we're teaching our agents, you may not, that's why I said the final wheel of the five pillars is respect. You know, I don't, we can, we can agree or not agree, but the one thing we have in common, the common thread is loss. And I'm always up for a good story. I love a great story because in God can use all of us to share your stories. Like Stephen, I've not heard your story, but one day I will love to listen to your story because how do you have a television show? How are you doing the things that you're doing? Because at your age, I was not doing what I was supposed to be doing. So I didn't have a TV show. I was in my living room saying, I want to be on television. But there were some things that I had to do. God was still in the process of making me and molding me. And it wasn't yet my time. And so, you know, when, the, when, when situations arise in our lives, you know, just know that God always has a master plan and he will see you through it. It's for, it's for your greater good. It's for your greater purpose. And things, they just don't happen for a reason. Nothing catches God by surprise. He knew that I would go through those situations, those, those trials. And now our widow ministry has grown. Our widower community is growing. And when I came first arrived, didn't, it's a club nobody wants to join. I said, where are the widows? Where are they? Well, they're in the houses. Some of them, you know, we're hurting. And God is using this ministry to help encourage because our widows, our widow community, because the Bible says we are not to forget about the widows and the orphans. So I'm grateful that God is using me. He used a broken woman to lead, I guess, to be the leader. How about that? And you know the term hurt people, hurt people. Yes. Who are broken. I think it's very inspiring to see Aww. it back to so many people through your hurt and your pain. Um, because it's easy to hurt someone else because you're hurting. That's when right. People who are hurt people who are hurting people. And how can they move on from that and identify? It's important to identify that you're doing so. How can they identify it? How can they acknowledge it? And how can they move forward? Yes, talk to speak with talk with one of our agents of change. We're training agents to be that listening ear, and they can give us a call at Loss. Uh, they can reach out to us on our Facebook, our website, Loss dot Events on Facebook. We are training agents every day how to respond to individuals who are experiencing that. I need to reach out, call. We're confidential. Like I will not share your story. You have to give me the permission, but it is not it is not for me to share your story. It is just for me to give you acceptance and love and support because that's what people need. All of us need acceptance. We need love. We need support. And sometimes we don't get that even from our own families, to be honest. So, hey, reach out to us. Hey, we'll show you how to do it because I'm doing it every single day. I'm sharing my truth. You guys are literally watching me live out my life. You've seen, you knew my husband, you saw me, some saw me at the funeral, you saw me, what I've experienced. I, my life is an open book. So I can't fake this. This is all real. So you can see like, wow, how is this woman doing this? It's all God. I had to share my story, but I had to ask, I had to answer the question, what is my truth? And when I did that, God revealed a certain, a, he, re, he revealed my number. Everyone has a number in life that they are assigned to. You don't know that. You may have not known that, but every person has a number. And when I discovered my number, God gave me lost ministry. 
how, what are you talking about? My number is 26. What is 26? When I met my husband and God showed me this, when I met my husband, he was 26 years old. We were married for 26 years. He passed away June 26. My father's birthday is February the 26th. My niece's birthday is July the 26th. So if there are so many 26s, I, you don't have all day, I promise. I, there, that number, we were married on the 13th of March, 13 times two is what? 26. So that number has been in my life. So I took it to the Bible. I said, God, what does this number mean? And God began to show me some things in the Bible with the number 26. For one, he changed my name. I have a new name. I, I said, God, the name beloved is mentioned 26 times in the Bible. See, I'm so precious that God calls me beloved. And I'm grateful for that. And when I think about Jesus and David, there were King David, there were 26 generations. And attached to David was Ruth and the widow, Ruth, who married Boaz, and then Naomi. Naomi was David's grandmother. Naomi was a widow. And Naomi reminded me of myself because when her husband died and her sons, she pushed everyone away. She said, y'all go, don't worry about me. I didn't want anyone to be around me. I wanted to move, if I could have moved to the end of the earth, if I could have moved to Antarctica, Stephen, I just wanted to go and hide under a rock. Hurt when you're devastated, you just want to be left alone. When you're so broken, really, what can anyone say? You know, experiencing that. So I'm so grateful for this organization because I was the first case. I arrived to, I arrived to laws on a 747 of devastation. And God said, what is your truth? I said, really? You want to know what my truth is? Because I'm tired of all this traveling. I'm going to tell you what my truth is. And I just began to let the Lord know. And then I began sharing. And as I share my story again, people say, well, you know, I, did, I, I didn't go through what you, I, I did not experience in that. I did not experience that. But my mother passed and I understand, you know, I feel heartbreak. I feel devastation. So it was comforting to know that I'm not alone. And, and so when that number, God gave me that number 26, man, doors have opened. Like I'm here on your TV show now because I know where I'm going. I'm, I know where I'm going. I'm going to be on the cover. I'll be featured on the cover of a magazine coming up in November. So when I say that, when God gave me and showed me that number, you know, doors open. So I challenge you, Stephen, if you don't know what your number is, you better think about it. And you know, I'm glad that you ch are challenging me because I don't know my number. Um, and I will pray on that. And I want to ask you, how do you find the number? Do you, you just pray and ask God? To yeah. give because I know many people who are, who are watching, they hear you say the number, they want to know how do you find that number? Or is the number something that you just don't find? It just comes to you throughout life. Mm -hmm. It's been around you all of your life. And sometimes, like me, I was too busy in life to ever discover my number. When my husband was here, look, I had a whole husband and everything. I'm too busy to look for a number. I'm too busy. I'm, I got a magazine. I, got, I am too busy to be looking for a number. But when life hit and I was just, Lord, help me. He showed me this number. And even my husband's billfold, I mean, so many 26s, I promise you. Like, he had 26 $1 bills in his wallet. 26! And then when I had my first speaking engagement, four months after my husband passed, it was October the what? And when I noticed it, it might have been three. When I discovered that I'm speaking on the 26, it was like 326. Like, what does all these 26s mean? So I think how I can help people discover that number has been with you all of your life. And if, you're, if you've just been busy in life, you've never paid attention to it. Think about birth dates and think about maybe how many siblings you have. My father is the 26. My niece is on the 26. I married my husband when he was 26. We were married for 26 years. But some it may come after. And for me, it was like when my husband passed, I discovered my number. But there are some people in life who have discovered their number. And when Marla McCants discovered her number, she'll have to tell you, I mean, Marla is doing great. I've helped her discover her number. I want to ask you, you are such an inspiration to some. <laughs> just some, just some. To lots of people. 
Where does that come from? Because it's there, but it's deeper than everything that you're saying. Where does that come from? Man, and you know what I'm going to say, but I have to say God. I mean, I, it's no way I could have pulled myself up from this. It's just him, I, my strong faith, my family. My grandmother was such a praying woman. That woman prayed all the time. We've had people to pray for us, Stephen, that we may have never even knew that they were known that they were praying for us. Like, we just don't get here because we're so great. I'm not here because I'm so great. I'm here by the grace of God and you are too. And it's a blessing. Like in the beginning, I said, it's good to be seen. It is so great to see your face, to look upon you, to see your face, to see, you know, you said you were going through some things, but look at you. I don't know, but look at you today. So I feel, and then I would love to ask you, what has helped you, Stephen? Because you've had some challenges. So for you. I want to let people know that life it's all in what you make it. Mm. Um, and I think it's interesting. First and foremost, see, I love what you're trying to do. See, you <laughs> ask me the question. But you know what? I want to answer this because I want people to understand. That's that right. Life is your journey. And no one's going to teach you how to maneuver through your own journey. So sometimes you have to learn that and you have to receive that this is your own personal journey. It does not matter how mom's life was or how anyone else's life is. You have to follow your own life. For me, I've had so much hurt in my mm. life being people just offending me, treating me ugly, doing oh. mistreating me, abusing me. Oh my God. And to fit and have to be strong. This year has taught me everything. Mm -hmm that I've been through, oh. that people have no idea, idea about, including my mother, I had to face those things and say, I can't let those things destroy me anymore. Mm. Be strong enough to say, I'm tired of being beat up and I'm tired. And That's your truth. God. See, for me, I'm, I'm a strong, tough cookie. So I like to cover things up and deal with them in my own way and suppress it. But that's not good because things that have hurt you, you'll end up being the person that you cut everybody off because you don't trust and you're just hurt. So in this season of my life, I'm learning how to be a better Steven. Yes. You know, that I, could, that I think I'm a good Steven now, but there's more. Because in this next life, in this next journey, I can't be bringing this crap that I'm that I'm in now. With I love it because it's it's a part of growth. But it goes, and I'm telling people this too: you have to acknowledge what you're going through and realize what you're going through is okay, because one day you'll be strong enough to sit in it and say, you know what, I'm gonna give this to God because I'm strong now. Because you can't allow yourself, you can't you can't beat yourself up because I beat myself up. So I think it's important for people, viewers watching to understand, stop beating yourself up about the things that have happened in your life that you can't control. Just realize it's happened, acknowledge it, deal with it, give it to God and move on. Ooh. No, I refuse to be in my seventies bitter oh. because of stuff that I had to deal with as a child, not doing it. So I want to encourage everyone to just do that to do that. Um, I'm sorry, because this, this is not about- Don't be sorry, please don't, because it was needed. What? It was necessary. It was, it was. So yeah, this next, this next Steven, I don't even go, I'm not even gonna know what to do with Steven, this next one, because I'm just not. The world, the world better watch out, because they're not gonna know what to do with this Treva. <laughs> That's right. That's okay. right. I'm gonna ask you, aside from everything, you are a person who's very strong, but you've also had people who, you know, you're on social media, you're busy, you're active. And as much support that you do have, you also have people who don't support you. And people who say they're in your corner and in your face, and they say, you're doing such a great job. Or the, they are the main people who are behind your back, just ruining your name and your legacy. 
How do you deal with that? Mm, I think now, I used to worry about it before, before. It's like before the COVID hit, right? Let's see, before I would be worried about it. I would worry about it. It would affect me. But now it's like, it doesn't bother me. It just, it, it, it just, I don't know, like the water on a duck's back or what have you. I shake it off. I shake it off. I shake, let the haters come on, bring them. Because you can't do anything to me. You just can't. You can't do anything. God has the one that God has the power to destroy the soul and the body or whatever. Man can't harm you. He cannot. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. I'm covered by God's love and nothing is going to stop me. I'm just, I'm different. I'm wired a little different now. I think you have to hit rock bottom. And when you come up from that place, really, does it matter what they said about you? They talked about Jesus. They talked about some of the greatest people. They talked about Oprah Winfrey. That didn't stop her from becoming a first woman billionaire. They talked about, come on, every, they talked about Stephen. It didn't stop him from having a television show at Austin Peay State University. They talked about Treva, and it didn't stop me because we're here. You know why we're here? Because God meant for us to be here. And that's how I look at it. So keep going. Don't stop. Go even harder. Let your haters be your motivators and uh, keep on going. That is the season that many people should step into. That's good stuff. When did you step into that season? Right just now. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Since my husband's passed, something has come over me, honey. I, God's, I'm serious. Like, I, I get it now. I'm not the same tree, but I'm wired. I'm built differently. If you think you know me, you don't. I'm, I'm wired. God is, it, it, it's amazing. I'm more direct now. I, I know what I want. The mask is gone. It's all gone. Disintegrated, if you will. What is my truth? And I share it now, sometimes too bold, a little bit too boldly sometimes. But I'm grateful. I don't, I don't want anyone to wear that mask. I'm talking about that ugly facial, not talking about the natural, because somebody said, oh, she's talking about with this COVID. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about the mask where we hide our tears, we hide our scars. Listen, your scars are beautiful. Your scars are beautiful. Your story is beautiful. Tell your story. You didn't go through that to just die in it. You went through it so you can help somebody else. Ooh, that is the, that is the truth. And I hope that um, I receive, but I hope that our audience receive. And Me too. I think that sometimes when you speak, it's important for you to receive. And I can tell that you've received your own words. Because often... Yeah say many things, but we're not listening to the own words that are coming out of our mouth. And I think it's important that people watching today understand before you give advice to anyone, uh -oh. can you follow your own advice when you go through a, a different situation that allows you to listen to the advice that you once gave to someone? Can you follow your own advice? And, you know, it's important for us to do that sometime. And it's important for us to pay attention. Um, it's very important for us to pay attention to the things around us and the energy around us. Mm -hmm. How do you do so? How do you pay attention to the energy and the space that you're in? And how do you call that out when it's ugly or when it's positive? How do you make sure you control your energy? Because so many people don't know how to do that. How do you control your space and your energy? I think you have to take time out for yourself. I think you have to, you know, I like to work out. I like to walk in the morning. What is it? What is your me time? Everyone has to carve out some time for themselves. Maybe you like to cuddle, curl up in the bed at night and read a great book so that you can have that time to preserve your energy, right? Energy is working on the inside. And so you have to have that time. If not, you're just going to be running on fumes and you're not good for anyone. You're going to be snapping at folks, going off on people, doing crazy stuff. You're not eating healthy. You know, you, you can't wake up and eat those bag of chips and cookies and all of that and expect that you're just going to be like my Angelo. You're not going to do that. So you have to take care of the body, preserve it. Right. And so, hey, you're good. Take time out for yourself. Take a bubble bath. Take a go go sit in the sauna and chill. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's so simple that a, that a crazy a fool will air. It's so simple. If you take care of you, then you can take care of someone else. It's so simple. That's right. You have experienced dramatic growth. Um, and where do you see yourself in the next five to 10 years? Hopefully alive. <laughs> uh, just doing what I'm doing, work, working in ministry, uh, working with this lost organization, traveling around the world. Like all I want, I'm, I retired at 48, meaning I'm done working naturally. I'm just, I'm, I do my TV show. I produce that. My goal though is to own my own television network and perhaps we can team up something on that. But my goal is to have my own television network someday in all honesty. What is your vision? My sister, I interviewed my sister not too long ago, and she talked about the importance of a vision board and vision casting. Do you do so? I, yeah, well, I, I think that, yes, I do have a vision. And for one, I would say, you know, stay focused. I'm staying focused in my vision, rising from the devastation to elevation and helping people uh, to move forward. My ministry is helping people you know, helping people, giving them the tools that they need, almost like a midwife, if you will. I go in, do what I need to do, and success. The baby is born. So I am an innovator. I'm a motivator. And staying true, you have to stay focused. My thing is stay focused to whatever God is calling you to do, because if you don't stay focused, then you'll be all over the place. And I've been all over the place. So now... It's like tunnel vision. I'm gonna keep my eye on the prize. Whatever God has shared and told you or whatever your vision is, if your vision is to you know, go out and build homes for homeless people, then you need to stay right there in that vision. Don't stray because something is popular or because everyone is in line doing it another way. Stay true to your purpose and whatever that God has called you to do, stay true to that. How can people stay true to their purpose if they don't know what their purpose is? How can they identify what their purpose is? Okay, that's a great question. Surround yourself. Who are the people in your boat? Who's helping you roll that boat? First of all, who's in your boat? You got some haters in your boat? It's hard to do anything with a bunch of haters. So you gotta have some supporters. And if they aren't helping you boat, roll that boat to the other side, then it's time to either get you a new boat or, you know, that boat's going to, you know, turn over and everybody's going to drown. So, you know, save yourself. Get some good people in the boat. Who's doing life with you? Think about the people who's doing life. That's how you, that's the first step in, in discovering your purpose. Who's doing life with me? And be honest in your truth. What is my truth? My truth is that nobody likes me and I'm in this boat all by myself. Well, then keep rowing. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> I received that, and I hope that the viewers watching today received everything that you have stated. First and foremost, I want to thank you for your time, your energy, your spirit, your kind words, your wisdom. Aww, thank you. Uh, integrity of who you are, because I hope people who are listening and watching, they receive something from this interview, and they take what's being presented to them and they manifest it into their lives. So thank you. Before thank you. we wrap up, I want to ask you, where can people find you? Where can they follow you? Where can they, where can they find loss? How can they get involved? L sell yourself. This is your time to just promote. Sell it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to sell it. Our website is lost-events.org or lost-events.org. Uh, I'm Treva R. Gordon on social media. Treva Gordon, Treva R. Gordon. We have a lot of events coming up to include. Uh, we have our Black Tie one-year anniversary coming up. I don't know when this airs, but it's coming October the 17th. We have an all all night well not all night an adult skate night that's coming up first friday we're going to be doing first night friday nights first fridays at magic wheels from 9 8 30 i'm sorry 9 30 to midnight 21 and up every first friday of every month you can find us out there we're doing a 21 u.s city coat drive from detroit down down to jacksonville down to memphis 
everywhere, 21 U.S. City Coat Drive in December. So if you would like to get involved or you would like to become an agent of change, you can reach out at 931-980-4661. You can go to our website, visit at lost-events.org or on Facebook at lost.events. Please find us. If you have a story, we would love to listen to your story. We care. You're not alone. Give us a call. We promise to listen, not judge you in your truth. We just, we're here for support. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Shreva, for your time. And thank you. For watching today. Thank you so much for tuning in to It's Stephen Time. I got love for everyone, and I hope that you guys have love for other people as well. And if you don't, I ask that you find in your heart to start loving unconditionally, even when it's hard. Uh, stay tuned for next time. Much love to all of you guys. Stay safe. And until next time, bye.